So how are databases managed in production? When master goes down, we all have heard that some replica is chosen and promoted to be the new master. Is this something that an engineer does? Is this something that is done manually or are there tools to do it? Like how, how it actually happens? In this video, we dissect yet another GitHub about it. But apart from understanding what exactly happened and how GitHub mitigated it, we would spend a significant amount of time learning how databases are managed in production and the kind of tools that companies like GitHub use to ensure optimal DB performance and very high availability. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50, 60 engineers, every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Greek buzzes live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. Thanks. So like always, we start with the incident report. The incident report says, that as part of the database maintenance activity, the database team rolled out an updated version of Proxy SQL on Monday, June 22nd. The incident happened on 29th. So a week later, the primary MySQL node on one of our main database clusters failed and was replaced automatically by a new host. A lot of things to digest. We'll start one by one. So on May 22nd, uh, sorry, on June 22nd, they rolled out an updated version of Proxy SQL. This is the first new thing we heard. So Proxy SQL rolled out happened a week later master node crashed and after that something 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 happened we are yet to go through it but let's understand the first term that we heard new was proxy sql so what happened so what exactly is proxy sql at scale companies do not directly connect to their database for example api servers do not directly connect to the database they put something called as a proxy sql or a proxy layer in between the reason they put a proxy layer in between because it makes things very seamless so API server makes a connection to proxy SQL, proxy server internally makes connection to your MySQL cluster. A small clarification here, whenever I use the term database, it is always MySQL cluster because GitHub is built on top of MySQL and proxy SQL is also specific to MySQL. Okay, so proxy SQL sits in between your API servers and your database. Any query that you fire goes through proxy SQL and proxy SQL uh, forwards it to a database, gets the response and sends it back. So your application layer doesn't need to know that it is connecting to proxy SQL or MySQL cluster. It would have a MySQL endpoint. In this case, it would be proxy SQL's endpoint and the proxy SQL understands the MySQL protocol. So whatever it gets in the input, it would forward it to a, an appropriate or a proper database node would get the response and send it back. So why, why do we even need to use proxy SQL in production? One main reason to do it is to do better connection handling. So let's say if your API servers scale, scale as in they add, you add hundreds and thousands of API servers, right? Each of those API servers would make connection to your MySQL cluster. That would put unnecessary load on your MySQL cluster. So what do you, what do you need to do? You need to have 
a proxy layer sitting in between that proxy layer establishes connection with your database and there you can ration it there you can ration the number of connections because your database cluster has a theoretical limit on the number of connections that it can handle so proxy sql ensures that that limit is never breached right and whatever the request comes in from your server gets gets accumulated over here and they are fired onto your database one after another so your database you never create more number of connections than your database can ever handle because everything goes to proxy sql the buffering the waiting of uh, firing of sql queries and every single thing happens at the proxy sql layer so this protects our database very well right reason number 1 reason number 2 is gatekeeper and enhanced security so what happens because every single query that you fire goes through proxy sql proxy sql is acting as your uh, is acting as your gatekeeper now what gatekeeper would do it does two things security and routing so for example if you have a three node mysql cluster one master two replica one of the replica is created to serve very frequent reads small frequent reads while another one is used to serve gigantic analytics query that you are firing on a massive table so for example you would want to <clears throat> do something like this that whenever someone fires a query on a specific table it should go to replica 2 whenever someone fires a query on any other table it should go to replica 1 while writes should go to master this can be seamlessly done on proxy sql so your api server need not know which data node to connect to to get things done rather it would seamlessly fire query to proxy sql proxy sql would forward it to the corresponding database all the rules that you will write that hey write should go to master frequent read should go to replica reads on this main this gigantic table should go to replica 2 this can be handled very well by proxy sql so it makes life of uh, developers and engineers very simple and yeah and your performance and your architecture is performed because api server does not have to connect to all the three clusters and get things done rather it just makes a connection to proxy sql proxy server internally makes connection to the corresponding data nodes so that is a very 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 big advantage that we get by using proxy sql third advantage that we get is caching as soon as you have a proxy layer sitting in between the first thing that you might have thought of is caching like because everything is going through proxy sql so you can cache sql query responses for example select star from users where id is equal to 10 can be very well cached on proxy sql and after let's say a minute or so that cache is invalidated but up until then your request would not even have to go to a database it comes to proxy sql proxy sql has the cached response it would just send it right so places where you might want to cache things proxy sql can be one of such places to do it and the fourth one temporary access management this is an important one so what proxy sql allows you to do is it allows you to create temporary credentials for example you don't want to share your database username and password with every single engineer of the organization so what proxy sql can do is proxy sql can create a short time leave uh, a short time bound user let's say some random username is given and the credentials would work only for one hour after one hour it would be automatically deleted so temporary access management is also done at proxy sql layer so this way by having a proxy layer sitting in between it makes life so seamless and simple for engineers and api and your api servers to connect to your database everything just goes through one place and yeah you might think hey i am adding an extra hop but it is minuscule all it does is just understands the basic tcp request that is coming in does some processing and forwards it back but the advantages that you get are humongous so that's why at scale companies use proxy sql right okay so now that we have our understanding on proxy sql let's see what exactly failed so as per incident report what it says that uh the primary mysql node on one of the main cl database cluster failed and was replaced automatically by a new host within seconds the newly promoted primary crashed okay so your existing master crashed then an automated failover happened then the new master that was appointed that also crashed right so what happened is this looks like a very classic case of 
you promoting a master and that master not being able to like is not capable of handling the existing load so it crashes and then you promote another one and that also crashes so this looks like a case of cascading failure right so here what we also see is a new term new term called orchestrator so what it says is within seconds the newly promoted master crashed orchestrator's anti flapping mechanism prevented subsequent automatic failovers okay now this is yet another new term that we all should be learning about so orchestrator detected failure and quickly promoted the replica to be the new master and it so and it uh, uh, helped us ensure that there are no cascading uh, like something called as anti flapping pattern we will come to that so first of all we know that when the first master crashed another master was like another master was appointed so a replica was promoted to be the new master and it was done automatically then there means nothing on automatically it's just like lack of humor intervention but there has to be some process that is doing it that is orchestrator so orchestrator is a library so rather uh, orchestrator is a tool that is used to do mysql topology management just fancy terms of managing mysql clusters and doing ki hey this is the master this is a replica if master goes down promote a replica uh, load should be equally balanced between replica and whatnot so it's all about topology management as such for uh, through a tool called orchestrator right so what it does is uh, orchestrator's anti flapping mechanism prevented subsequent automatic failures now this is where things become interesting so apart from having your api servers your mysql cluster your proxy sql there is a fourth component called orchestrator orchestrator job is to keep an eye on your database topology as in how many data nodes you have which one are replica which one is master what is the replication lag if master goes down promote one of the replica automatically so this is where uh, you don't need human you don't need human intervention when a master goes down in few seconds a replica is promoted to be the new master right so orchestrator is used to is typically used to solve two problems first is discovery like you need to know like at scale see you're saying hey, i only have one data node i only have one database server see at small scale it doesn't matter but at massive scale you might have 10 or 15 read replicas uh, connected to a multi master setup split across geography so it is very important to have discovery to have you being able to see what's happening in your database cluster like how is it performing how is the replication lag right understand the performance and the topology that you have in your like like we draw diagrams like we draw diagrams with arrows and database uh, icons and what not it makes us understand how the topology looks like visually but there has to be a visual way to see it directly by connecting to a database cluster which is where orchestrator comes in but apart from that second big advantage more engineering savvy is recovery so whenever there is any failure not just master but even if a replica goes down it takes it out of the topology and puts it another one uh, within that so uh, recovery is another key aspect of orchestrator so it detects when master goes down it promotes a replica to the master if a replica goes down it takes it out of the topology so anything and everything around topology management is what orchestrator does orchestrator is continuously keeping an eye on all the databases in your network to just see ki how everyone's behaving right so key feature that these guys talked about is anti flapping pattern what exactly is anti flapping so anti flapping is a mechanism through which we prevent cascading failure by not doing automated failovers so we just saw how orchestrator detected that the master was down and it promoted another replica to be the master but that master also went down so what orchestrator could have done it could have promoted another replica to do to be the new master so that is where you would see cascaded db failures and this is a very common uh, reason why outages happen okay let me just give you a very quick walk through on how cascading db failures is a very common thing to happen you have a master node that master node went down right and let's say you have three replicas and you have some x amount of load coming your way when master went down you promoted one replica to be the new master now you have one master and two replicas the load is same your master or your now this database cluster instead of having four nodes now has three nodes now this three nodes has to handle all the load all the right load coming to this one master 
Now that master goes down because of load because it is serving partial reads and writes or some other replica would go down. So when that new master goes down, you promote another replica to be the new master and then that would go down. Then promote another replica to be the new master, then that would go down. So this is flapping where one flapped shirt, it flapped other, it flapped other, it flapped other, right? So that's like, uh, and this is what typically happens in a major outage at any organization. So that's where what we need to ensure that or what orchestrator does and it has a mechanism or a configuration that says anti-flapping. So what anti-flapping would do is if it sees a master go down, it promotes a replica to be the new master. If this new master also goes down, it would not promote any other replica because it would know that if I might promote another replica that would also go down because this second one went down, right? So this is how it tries to prevent, like although it's not making things better, your master is still having an outage, but your, read, your reads can still be served, right? The writes are failing, but the reads are served, but at least it would prevent you from having a lot of nodes going down. Only a couple of nodes went down and you stopped there. That is anti-flapping mechanism, right? Okay, so this is how it prevents us, uh, is it, how it prevents uh, cascading failures of database, right? But for how long? For until a cool-off period and this cool-off period is typically 5 to 6 minutes where after 5 to 6 minutes only it would promote another replica to be the new master. But for that time you cannot have a downtime. Right? So that's where because orchestrator did not again promote another replica to be the new master, what it did, it helped us prevent cascading failures and this requested for a human intervention. So that's where what GitHub team did is after they recovered uh, so, uh, because subsequent failovers were stopped with anti-flapping mechanism, after we recovered services, after we recovered services manually, the new primary became CPU starved and crashed. Okay. So, because automated failover did not happen, what would need to do? Some engineer has to do it manually because until the cool off period, orchestrator would not promote another replica to be the new master and an engineer needs to be involved. So engineer, what engineer would do? Well, hey, I, I would just add another, like I would manually promote a replica to be the new master. So that's what the team did. They tried to recover the services manually. And when they did it, the new replica that was promoted also crashed. So they tried automated failover, the new replica crash, the new master crashed. Then automated did not happen because that was the configuration of anti-flapping mechanism. So they did it manually. The newly promoted master also crashed. So how did they even recover out of this? So what they did is because what they are seeing is anytime they are promoting a replica as a new master, things are crashing. So after that, they don't have any other option. They rolled back to the previous version of proxy SQL and disabled a change in our application. So that is the final resort. Like they tried to keep things record because they did not like it happened a week later and that is the highlight. It did not happen immediately. So they didn't know what was the root cause for this. They guessed like someone might have recalled, hey, we just upgraded the version of proxy SQL. Could that be the reason? So after they tried everything to get the database cluster up, it wasn't happening. So that's where what they did is they did a full revert. So they reverted the code that required the upgraded version of proxy SQL. They downgraded the version of proxy SQL that they recently upgraded. So they reverted everything. They did a full revert and that solved the problem. And finally, when they promoted a new master, it started accepting writes and things became normal again. Right. So that is where you would all, you would a lot of times see this. And this is like, you'd say, okay, yeah, they should have reverted it earlier. They could not like, the changes happened on June 22 and a week later a node crashed and it was not recovering or any new node was not taking its place properly. Right? So every new master that was spun up was crashing and it was a week. So there was a gap of one week. How would anyone recall that what happened and what did not? Right? So that is where it was very tricky. Some good engineer might have recalled that hey, we upgraded the proxy SQL version and they did a full revert of the downgraded the proxy SQL version uh, to and basically reverted back to the old version and altered the code that required the new version that was there. After doing this, everything recovered and the storm was done. Okay, so what did we learn from this? 
we learned four very critical things oh but before we talk about that there is one very interesting thing uh, wait 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 okay so what they said is uh, we are analyzing application logs mysql core dumps and internal telemetry as part of continued investigation into cpu starvation issue right okay just two things to cover uh, application so they because here they did not even know why it is crashing or new master coming up is crashing and again and again so for that in order to debug better you need application logs and mysql core dumps this is very important so at scale when you are managing any database you need to understand how their core dump looks like what kind of things it has how to use it to debug such issue so mysql core dump is something that you should definitely google and check out it's a little heavy on the engineering side but i might cover it in future but i would really recommend you to just google about it and see how to debug things and it happens at scale how to debug it using mysql core dump so uh, 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 to be honest a very fascinating thing and one more thing that they could have done uh, over here is to have a list of everything that is deployed or changed at a very handy place so that it would not take longer time for anyone to discover ki, hey what did we push last asking different teams to do it having a single place of all the change logs that happened in your architecture should be there so that someone could just refer it and see ki, hey what might have caused this issue right okay uh, that is another takeaway from this Okay, four things we learned, uh, how companies handle production databases. We learned about Proxy SQL and Orchestrator, how Proxy SQL sits in between and does a lot of things fancy. Orchestrator does auto uh, does automate a lot of manual things that an engineer required to do. So Proxy SQL on Orchestrator, at a scale when you have a large MySQL cluster, you would typically see Proxy SQL and Orchestrator in your architecture. Third is importance of anti-flapping policy. Like anti-flapping mechanism and or anti-flapping policy we saw how it was a brilliant idea that after one failover you would not do another failover another automated failover because it might bring down your entire cluster and there would be a lot of nodes to recover another thing we learned and the fourth one when nothing works do a full revert right so understand what changed what happened in the architecture or in the code and do a full revert in most cases that would work right and that is typically the last resort it's like restarts right that it's like when a computer is not working we just do a restart and everything seems to work right similarly during any production outage full revert is always an option so a lot of companies typically when they are unable to mitigate it quickly they typically do this part and if you see this outage went uh, it outage lasted for two and a half hours that's an insane amount of time uh, for your database cluster to not accept writes right okay that's it that's it for this one i hope you learn how databases are managed in production and to be honest this is not theoretical i've used Proxy SQL a lot. Uh, Orchestrator I've definitely not used, but some scripts do these sort of things automatically at few of the places that I work. Uh, so yeah, Proxy SQL Orchestrator are not just theoretical. It is very well used in the industry across, and I hope and you should be exploring that uh, if you would want to understand how databases are very well managed in production. Nice. So yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it for this video. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post three in-depth engineering videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.